Now, here is a, uh, an example of optimization in extrusion blow molding. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start from the Parison in the, in the proper finished position. And due to symmetry, we're only going to use half the mold cavity because the other half of the cavity is identical. And we're going to go a little bit further, in fact, and take advantage of the, of, of the fact that there is two planes of symmetry, even down the center of that section there. So we're all only going to use one quarter of the, uh, of the total parison and look at what happens during the forming. So the mold closes, the inflation takes place, and you can see these corners are thinning out because we're starting off with a uniform parison. And we might be getting uh, too thin or below our critical values, and, um, and they might be easily, easily damaged. So um, the optimization uh, formula is essentially the same as it is for the um, preform. And here we see a result of the optimization steps. We have step one showing the very large final thickness variation along the position AB. Now this is along the arc length. So along that arc length, we have a very large variation. And then by step nine, we have a, a relatively uniform, very uniform, at least much more uniform than the initial condition um, when the initial preform or parison shape is optimized. Now let's look at the uh, cross view also. Um, there's a variation in this direction. Uh, initially, that is quite large too, going from a little over one to a little around uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 millimeter. And by optimizing the parison, you can also minimize that variation to have it much more even. Now let's take a look at what kind of parison we need to achieve this. So here is a, um, a thickness contour plot of the uh, initial parison shape, again, one quarter symmetry. And if we see uh, down the line AB, initially we started off with an even um, parison. And in order to get the optimum shape that we want in our product, we need to have this um, variation, kind of an M pattern in the, uh, in the parison that's extruded. Now, as you can see, um, that that uh, M pattern really only needs to occur um, in, in that position. In this position, we're going to have a slightly different pattern. At the sides, it almost, it's almost relatively uniform. And so um, this is going to require uh, a little bit more complex programming of our equipment to try to achieve exactly this shape. But uh, as we said, um, what we're trying to do is, is improve the uh, thickness variation, and in many cases, avoid a critical minimum that would make the part um, uh, too fragile to use. And so uh, with the software, we could see where we would need to program and make the parison uh, thicker. This is the same kind of result around the circumference. So AB now is in this orientation, and you can see that with the initial, uh, this is the initial Parison with even thickness, and the optimized requires a thin area near A and a thicker area, and then going back down to a thinner area um, at the other uh, point of symmetry. So the, the, and of course, this varies depending on where you take this cut uh, in, the, in the height direction. Now, this is an example of uh, the application of the software for a, uh, let's say, a more uh, simpler case in which we just need axial wall thickness control. So you can see we have this football-shaped um, uh, part that we want to make. And as you might expect, the region here, this graph shows kind of the thickness along that line. And the, uh, uh, the part is getting thinner. Uh, as you get to a larger diameter. So here the minimum thickness is shown to be somewhere in the uh, center of this part. And you can see the symmetry involved um, from this. 
Now, this is a result um, uh, caused, that one is a result caused by an even initial comparison. Now, with actual wall thickness control, the dye lips or the tooling, uh, primarily the inner tooling, can be adjusted actually, all right, up and down so that when, when the opening is closed, the comparison wall thickness is smaller, and then when the opening is increased, then the Parison wall thickness also increases. So by adjusting the movement of this inner die lip, we can control the Parison uh, thickness profile in the extrusion direction. And here is the um, control settings as determined by the simulation to achieve the um, thickness uniformity uh, that we need on the final part. So here we have the results of the thickness. Again, blue is thin, a thick red is thin. And we can see here the uh, non-uniformity of the thickness with the unoptimized comparison shape. And then with the optimized comparison shape, we can see we have a much, much more even uh, thickness distribution throughout our part. And to achieve that, we need to produce a comparison with this type of actual wall thickness variation um, coming out of the uh, coming out of the die. And this is um, again the control uh, that you would use on the system to adjust that uh, uh, that uh, extrusion of that comparison. And these are the uh, progression steps of the optimization from iteration zero to uh, iteration four, which results in a much more uniform um, final result. Now here's another uh, example for extrusion blow molding. Um, this is a windshield wiper fluid container, and it's quite often the thing that's given the last uh, least amount of thought in the automotive process. So it has generally a very complex shape. So you can see here with an even parison, um, starting parison thickness, we have a very large thickness variation um, throughout our final part, primarily in these corners. You can see from this angle view that these corners are getting very, very thin and, and fragile. And this uh, detail out here, this uh, cavity, uh, is also getting uh, quite thin because the material has to blow into that region. Otherwise, these walls are, are relatively thick, as you can tell by the, by the blue color and so forth. So um, the uh, simulation, if we see in steps here, uh, now we're seeing the finite element mesh. And this also demonstrates one of the uh, uh, very nice features within the software in that it can handle localized optimization of the grid. So here, you see this pattern here. These um, elements, uh, there's many, many more smaller elements here than there are in the majority of the, uh, of the grid because this needs to capture some detail on the part. Uh, for example, these corners where the material thins out at, you can see here that a finer mesh was placed in those areas because those elements are distorted further. And so um, we can get uh, a better description of the shape uh, by having uh, the more elements in that, in that region. And, and um, by being, being able to do this locally, as opposed to having to refine the whole geometry, we can save on the uh, calculation time and the, and the amount of memory required to perform this calculation. So here we have the result uh, using the uh, comparing the initial even uh, parison thickness to the uh, what happened. You can see here the this protrusion um, is getting quite quite thin in this area, and here is the optimized um, 
uh, Parison shape, a thickness distribution, and you can and you can see that this rather complex. We have this local a uh, high spot which has to then reduce rather quickly uh, in a short distance, and we have these local minimums in these regions surrounded by a relatively thick areas, and this is the theoretical optimum. And if you can achieve this, of course, you have uh, a virtually a totally uniform uh, wall thickness on your final part. Um, but and as I said, sometimes it's not possible to fully achieve everything, but at least we can get closer to this target will be better than having just a uniform wall thickness. So here is the, pre, the programming of the uh, axial wall thickness control for this part. So this is the actual wall thickness adjustment um, to achieve this part. And as a result, um, we have something like this on the, on the uh, preform. In order, to, in order to really achieve this, we need some partial wall thickness adjustment here at certain points and, and also here at certain points to, to do that. Um, but um, uh, nevertheless, the uh, Parison was uh, the sorry the pre uh, Paris, yeah, the Parison was extruded uh, with a controlled thickness distribution. There's the part coming out of the cavity. There's a, a side view of the of the cavity. And if if this analysis is done in the engineering stage or early enough, uh, you might be able to change the design of the part to um, uh, avoid potential trouble areas like there. maybe even you might get a web or you might even get a full blowout if the, if the part gets too thin and these sort of things can be predicted by the simulation and uh, avoided early on in the design stage. Um, now in this uh, project that was worked on they had a verification of the simulation with the final part down this uh, dotted blue line of the part. They measured the thickness this is the thickness profile. It's the uh, squares represent, or the bluer line represents the um, thickness along that line of the part. And the triangles uh, represent the simulation results. And as you can see, within the error bars of the, um, of the uh, simulation, the results are very, very close uh, to, um, to the reality. So in conclusion, um, optimization of blow molding is now fully automated um, with the aid of simulation software. For injection stretch blow molding, the initial thickness profile of the preform can automatically be optimized. And for extrusion blow molding, um, not only the initial Parison thickness profile, but also the actual wall thickness and partial wall thickness uh, extrusion control settings recommendations can be um, automatically optimized and provided from the software. So thank you for your attention. And um, at this moment, I'd be pleased to try and answer any questions. If we don't get to your question or if you think of something later, um, please feel free to send me an email at uh, this address, jp, just two letters, jp at compuplast.com, or call me directly at 905-814-8923, extension 701. Thank you very much.